guys and girls, we've got this question is from Boo Boo Murphy, and it's about complete dominance. Okay, complete dominance. Now remember, complete dominance, old Mendel had a law, and he wrote his law of dominance. And in his law of dominance, it states that if we have two parents that have alleles um, that are pure, so pure breed alleles for a characteristic, and they are crossed, the F1 generation, so the first family, the first filial generation, all the offspring in that first filial generation will resemble or look like the, the dominant parent characteristic or carry the dominant parent characteristic. Okay, that's the law of dominance. All right, so what do we have here? We have got um, flowers. These are all flowers, okay, and they seem to have done a very nice study because they say in a particular plant species, it's controlled by two alleles, okay, capital D and small d, all right, so dominant, recessive. Then they did four crosses, so here are crosses, one, two, three, four. And in each of those crosses, they had 40 offspring that resulted. So that's also a total of 40, that's 40, and that's a total of 40. Okay, um, are produced in each cross. The phenotypes of the parents and the offspring in each cross are recorded. So here are the phenotypes of the parents. Okay, so parent one is purple, white, purple, purple, white, white, purple, white. And then it shows you here what each of the offspring ended up being. Okay. Now, first thing you do, look here, Mendel's law of dominance. So, okay, remember, when I take parents with pure characteristics, okay, but they are contrasting, all the offspring are the, are the color of the, or will have the characteristic of the dominant parent. Okay, so if I cross this purple with this white, look, all the bubbas are purple. So what does that tell you? That purple is capital D and white is equal to small d. Now, let's check that. You're not going to check it when you see here white and white gives you white, okay? White and white, if it was heterozygous, okay, then what would we have had here? We would have had purple flowers. Okay, for this one. Um, here, if we look at this one here, we have purple and we have white, but the fact that there are white offspring here. So, I take purple plus white and I then end up with white offspring. Remember, white is recessive. It means that one of those gametes had to have come, or one of the alleles had to have come from the other parent, which means the parent had to have, have had a little letter. So we now know that this parent is hetero. This is homo recessive. That's homo recessive. Homo recessive. Um, the fact that we've got white flowers here tells us this is hetero, and this one is hetero, and purple and white tells us this was homozygous dominant, and this is homozygous recessive. Okay, that is how you are always going to know, whenever you see a cross. Right, 
if, you, if there is the recessive gene comes through or that recessive characteristic comes through, then it means there had to have been two alleles that are recessive. Okay, so state the dominant flower. We know that it's the purple flower. Okay, use cross one to explain your answer. So we're going to use cross one to explain our answer. Cross one was purple times white. And all the offspring are purple. Uh, purple. Which means I'm going to just do a quick little Punnett square here. And please, you guys must feel free to do this kind of thing on your exam paper. So we'll take capital B, capital D, small d, small d, and does that rule hold true? Yes, it does. All the offspring are purple. They heterozygous purple, all of them. Okay, then state Mendel's law of segregation. People, you must know this. Let's just get ourselves some space here and we get a different color. Okay, when we do Mendel's law, Mendel's law of segregation. This is very important. And you actually learned this in meiosis as well. Okay, it says the two alleles for a characteristic separate, mm, man, Se what is wrong with me today? My brain is in my sugar. Okay, um, se I can't even think of how to spell separate, okay, during meiosis so that each gamete only has one allele for that specific characteristic. And it's exactly what we did that here. Yeah. There are your two alleles, and here are your two alleles, and what happens? These two alleles separate, so you're going to have D will go into the one gamete, and D goes into the other gamete, okay, meiosis, okay, and here we have D into one gamete, and we have that D into the other gamete, and this is meiosis. So, we can either have this one and that one, or this one and that one, or the other way around. But here you go. Each time, we are going to end up with heterozygous. Okay, so your laws, your Mendel's law of segregation, simply two alleles for a specific characteristic during meiosis are going to separate. So whether it's dominant capital D and recessive D, or Two dominants or two recessives makes no difference. The two alleles, one on each chromosome, that are for that characteristic are going to separate and go into separate gametes. Okay, finished, done, easy peasy. All right, so now, next question. It says here, use a gen genetic cross to show how the crossing of two purple flowering plants can produce white offspring as in cross two. So let's just quickly check cross two. In cross two here, we're going to have purple flower and purple flower, and they want to know how white ones ended up. So we have to do this cross. So I'm going to show you step by step where your marks come from. Let's go back to white. Okay, so 
we're going to say the P1, that's a half a mark, okay? We have the um, phenotype. This is the phenotype of the parents. We're going to have, what was it, purple plus purple times purple, okay? And then we are going to do the genotype and we know that if white, bub white flowers were produced, we need to have a small D on both sides. But the fact that they are both purple means this is what the genotype is. Okay, then meiosis occurs. And that gives you a half a mark, sorry, half a mark. That will give you a mark. And sometimes they give you a mark for this and sometimes they don't. Okay. Now, we have our cross and our cross is going to look like this. Our nine little blocks. And if we're doing a dihybrid cross, we are going to have 16. Because there will be four times four. Okay. Now we have our gametes. And those gametes, we're going to have a capital D, small d, and a capital D, small d. Now remember segregation, they're going to separate. So either this one or that one will bond either with this one or this one. So we're going to have capital B, capital D, capital D, small d, so it's a heterozygous. Capital D, small d, another heterozygous, and then little d, little d, and here are our little white flowers. Okay, because they're both recessive and fertilization. And just for writing that word, you're going to get half a mark. Now, what is our result? Our F1, which means our first filial generation, the genotype is here, okay, so we can write it out, the genotype, because the genotype is going to tell us what the phenotype is. The genotype is going to be DD to, sorry, 1DD to 2 capital D small d to 1 small d small d, All right, and then the phenotype Okay, the phenotype is going to be three purple, because that's what you're going to see. Remember, phenotype is what you see, guys. This is what's in the genes, and this is what you see. So it's what you physically will see. You'll see a black coat, or a white coat, or um, a dog with black dog with white spots, or curly hair, or straight hair. It's what you are going to see. That's the phenotype. All right, so the phenotype will be three purple, two, one, white. Okay.